Hello. How are you today? I'm going to be a dentist. I am. Don't worry, you're in very good and capable hands. No harm will befall you. Please, try to relax. I've got lots of new tools, and I want to show them all to you. <laughs> Can I show you my new clamp? Oh, look at it. It's tiny, but your teeth are tiny. clamps down and it holds your artery closed so you won't see it holds it won't come loose and it holds still so you won't so you won't bleed too much you won't bleed to death i didn't have this clamp in my last surgery but i have it now so this is good for you mm-hmm we're going to give you a shot. <laughs> Don't worry, it won't hurt. It's a big shot. Oh. I can't get this thing off. Oh, it fell off. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shh, shh, shh. Don't. No, it's too, no. It's too late. It's too late. We're going to have to put some Novocaine in there. You'll feel better. You feel all tingly. I'm gonna give you the tingles. I am. Let me just put a little end right there. And then I'm gonna put a little end right there. And then I'm gonna put a little end right there. Oh. Then I'm gonna put a little end right there. And I'm gonna put some right in there. Oh. Yes. And then I'm gonna put the rest right. Right there. Wiggle it around. Get it in there. Mix it in. Don't worry. I'm going to check for sensitivity now. Aren't those beautiful? I, I like them a lot. That's why I bought them. They're shiny. Oh. I like them too. You're not very sensitive. I'm poking around. And I think you're going to be all right. So let's take your temperature. Can I take your temperature? Okay. Open up. No, no, no. No candy till you open up. Let me take, come on. Open up. That's good. That's good. Right there under your tongue. Oh. You're such a good patient. I'm so proud of them. They let me take their temperature. The easy way. I can't take it the hard way. Well, we all know why they call taking your temperature that way, the hard way. Yes, we do know. We know, don't we? We know why they call it the hard way. Oh. Mm, you're fine. No fever, so I can proceed with my operation. That's right. When doctor has to take your temperature the hard way, he gets excited. And it makes him very, makes things very hard for him to accomplish his sworn duties mm, to the Hippocratic Oath. Because we shall cause no harm now, should we? Now, I'm just going to do a little scraping in here. about 
shoe. I don't think you've been brushing and flossing correctly. Have you? This one tooth looks a little bit soft. Do you have soft teeth? Let me look. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, I think you have soft teeth. What are we going to do about that? I think we're going to have to do a little flossing. That's the most horrendous sound, isn't it? As if going to the dentist wasn't bad enough. You have to listen to that malarkey. Do you know what malarkey is? Malarkey? Hmm? Oh, you do know what malarkey is. Where's my tweezers? Where's my tweezers? Oh, you're so naughty. Hold still. Quit fidgeting. You're making me nervous. I don't want to hurt you. Not that I would, I would never hurt you. But I could accidentally hurt you if you keep fidgeting around. Hold still. I'm trying to get this floss in there, in the hole. Almost. There we go. Well, you're no help at all. You know that. Quit fidgeting. I swear I have the worst patience. And I have a very good bedside manner. I don't know why my patients get so nervous. Now, we're going to floss those dirty, nasty stumps that you call teeth. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You've been eating pork again, haven't you? I can tell. What is that I smell? Is that teriyaki chicken? Oh, disgusting. Disgusting. Let me wrap this floss around my finger. Look how you do that. Just like that, see? That way if anything goes wrong, it'll pull the whole works down. You just go with the mistakes. It's called improv. That's right. You've got something stuck back in your mouth, and I'm determined to get it out. And I'm starting to get pissed because my little clamp thing isn't working, so it's not going to happen this time. Oh, I got it. I'm going to pluck it now. How did you get that stuck back in your throat? That's an eyeball. What have you been eating? Are you sure? It doesn't look like a mountain oyster to me. You swallowed somebody's eyeball. That's bad luck. And oh, 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 oh. I see another one. Look. 
you know that protuberance sticking out of the back of your throat gives new meaning to eyes in the back of your head. <laughs> oh my God, that was so funny. You have eyes in the back of your head, but in this case, they were in your throat. You know, you could choke on that. You could. You could choke on that. And then where would you be? You'd be a choking victim. Okay. Well, stay with me now. This is the best part. I'm going to pick all of the dirty, nasty stuff out of your teeth. So hold still. Okay? And I've got my gloves on, so that makes it sterile now. Not like before. Mm-hmm. So get ready. Because here it comes. Here it comes. I'm going to start picking. I understand. I don't want to cause you any troubles. We're going to have to aspirate. You know how to aspirate, don't you? That means we're going to have to dig all of the crud and the scum. And all the pus globules from your back of your throat. You definitely have some stones in the back of your throat. You do. Along with those eyeballs. I think you have somebody's optic nerve wrapped around um, your coccyx or whatever it is in the back of your throat. Your tonsils. Yes. In fact, the more I look, hold still. Wait. This can't be possible. Shh, 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 shh. Don't worry. It's okay. I'm a professional. I'm a professional. Okay, let me look. <gasps> it's true. <gasps> I think your tonsils are pregnant. Oh my goodness. What in the world have you been doing? You don't think that's possible? It is possible. been naughty, naughty, naughty. There's currently very few birth control methods out in the public market, uh, the consumer market, to keep your tonsils from getting pregnant. No, very few. A condom will possibly stop your tonsils from getting pregnant, but we all know you weren't using one. Mm -mm. I know you don't believe that this is possible, but I once was taking care of a patient. Mm -hmm. I have patients. I do. Besides, you know, I have lots of patients. Several. I've had a few. And this patient said that they had a stomach ache, and they weren't feeling well, and they had an uh, infection in the back of their throat and their tonsils. I'm still scraping, by the way. Scraping all that nasty, dirty black out of there. And I put on gloves first thing, because you always do that first when you're making any kind of medical video, because mm -hmm. you want to be sterile. And then, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm a professional. And I opened up their mouth and looked deep down in their throat. And you'll never guess what I saw. Do you want to take a guess? That's right. Puppies. Mm-hmm. Six white German Shepherd puppies. How did you know that? Oh, my goodness. Well, tell them I said hello. Well, it's not every day you deliver a handsome set of German Shepherd puppies. Mm-mm. I was very proud to partake in that historical event.
I know it's hard to believe. I had a hard time believing it whilst I was on the phone with Guinness Book of Records myself. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I embarrassed them a little bit by turning them in, but it was for their own good. They needed to learn safe sex. And if I have to drag them through the mud to get them to adhere to my morals, then so be it. I'm sorry, but that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. That's right. Yes, I'm glad you understand. Of course, I think you might just be agreeing with me. Because I have you in my chair. You do agree with me, don't you? You do think I am correct. I wouldn't want you to agree with me just because you're in my chair. Oh, okay. I'm so glad. Oh, that means a lot to me. We've got to get all this dirty, nasty plaque out of your mouth. Oh, it's so disgusting. Especially this top row. Your front teeth. They look like a row of nasty barbed wire. Have you ever thought about getting braces to straighten them out? Your lip every time you eat. If you're not careful, you're going to swallow your own mouth, I swear. Um, right there? Oh, that one? I think we're going to have to get in there and do a little exploratory surgery. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, it won't hurt. <clears throat> I've got this thing so I can see quite clearly. Oh, there you are. Ooh. Can you see me looking at you? My eye? See? It's in there. It helps me focus. All of my energy so we can cut that piece of optic nerve. We want to cut that piece of optic nerve tissue away from your tonsils so that the fetal tissue in your tonsil pregnancy can grow properly. Yes. I'm glad I'm a concerned surgeon. Not every surgeon cares about their patients, but I do. I care a lot. I do. And I want you to have a successful delivery of the babies, even if they are bastard children. Yes. So much fun when they come out and they all start screaming at the same time and the mother why she just goes completely batty insane right on the operating table it's quite a circus and it makes me happy every time so let's get that oh i i think i almost did a boo-boo i think i touched one of your teeth Now let's pull all of that nasty tissue out of the back of your throat. I call these my goofy gabas. They work so good. Yeah. Pull 
pulling out all of the nasty tissue. We're gonna pull it out. Oh, it's putrid. It's very rotten. It was gangrenous. Do you know about gangrene? Why it's not very healthy for you? It isn't. No, gangrene is bad. Anything green or rotten, putrid, yellow, smelly, rotten, it's very bad for you. So you just want to get a pair of tweezers. Let me get you a good pair. A nice pair of tweezers like this brand new pair I bought. Look how long they are. You can reach all the way around to the back side of your back. You can grab those nasty pus globules and you can just squoze them and watch the yellow pussy blood and green putrid fluids fly out of your body. Oh, and it feels so good. An eruption of joy, if you ask me, to get all that putrid flesh cleansed so that you no longer have infection rotting out your corpuscles of your body, your skin organ. You do have an organ of skin around your body. My body has skin all over it, and I'm sure yours does too. I haven't seen all the parts of you yet, but I'm working on it. Yes, and your skin organ. That sounds so funny. I don't know why. It needs proper maintenance, or you'll get a disease. And then where will you be? Sickly, ill, that's right, on the public door. Oh, you don't want that. No, no, you want to be a healthy, working part of society, paying for your dental, just like everyone else. That's right, always paying for it and hardly using it. <laughs> Can't stand the dentist. <laughs> and I don't know why they don't like him. Here, look. I've, I've seen pregnancies like yours where they don't go properly to term. And the babies just, they don't want to come out the right way in. They went in one way, but they want to come out the wrong way. And we have to turn them around. And if that's true, then we need our special forceps. Uh-huh. And these are very good. You stick this in to the tonsil area. Mm -hmm. Right there, you stick that down in the tonsils. You grab a hold of that baby puppy and you pull it out and you suck it back in and it turn the baby around like this. You turn it around and then you release it and push the baby back in to the womb area, the throaty throaty tonsil womb area. Yes, there you go. And then you clamp down on the coccyx and you twist it around and pull it that way. And then it works perfect every time. Look at that. That's something you don't see in a video very often, do you? Oh yeah, that's a good one. And it works, believe me, I'll tell you. I had, uh, yes, I had, oh, I did, one time, and I don't know how it happened, I'm, I'm being honest now, I'm, I'm not a liar, I'm a lot of things, yes, I'm that too, but I'm not a liar, one time when, in my youth, uh, before I went to dental school, uh, I got into a little bit of a mischief, and I had a, uh, I don't know how to tell you this. I don't even know if you want to know. Do you want to know? Okay, I'll tell you anyway. I had a badger puppy. A badger, um, I don't know what they call them, kitten? A badger baby. And it was stuck in, back in my throat. And I had to get it out. So, they're furry little devils, yes they are. And it was holding on with its little claws in the back of my throat. And it was chewing on my tonsils. And it was just a horrendous experience. And the doctor reached in with this clamp. And he just, oh, he got right around.
on that baby and he clamped it down and then he crammed it back in place and pulled it out and released and and I knew I was going to be all right then I knew I knew then what I don't know now and that experience of having that badger or wombat whatever it was it might have been a wombat like a flying squirrel is that what a wombat is I'm not sure but having that uh, baby stretched and pulled from inside my mouth inspired me greatly to enter the medical field and I was so proud of that moment I really was not quite as proud as I am right now to be scraping all the nasty, fetid, um, processed food stains from your teeth. But I was pretty proud. I was. Mm-hmm. I was. Yeah. Let me stick this in here. Let me see if I can get that in there. And, uh, let me see. I gotta get another one in there. And... I've never forgotten that experience. No. Well, at your age, you probably could give that some thought to terminating the pregnancy, but I know you have a good heart. I'm glad you've given it some thought. that idea out it's not against my beliefs or or with my beliefs I think if the puppy's mama is it uh, in danger of losing their own life then termination is acceptable in certain cases now I remember one time when a woman come in with a litter of Labrador, mm -hmm, Labrador puppies, and she had 16 puppies in her mouth. And I said, no, this won't do at all. And I told her, you know, you're going to choke on those fur balls. Those fur balls are going to get stuck in the back of your throat. And she said, no, I'm carrying it to term. And I tried to cite a time when a man came in with a litter of St. Bernard puppies stuck in his throat, and same thing. He didn't listen. He didn't listen. And that man's dead now. She should have listened. Um, no, he died 15 years later of um, natural causes, but, you know, he's dead. And he never got to see those puppies, you know, become adults. And that's what was my point. You know, he should have terminated. Well, of course that's what I meant. What did you think I was talking about? Oh. Oh, that's terrible. I would never tell anybody to do that. I hope this is relaxing for you. Because your teeth are so disgusting. I can't relax. I've been trying to relax. We always say, oh, relax. This is such a wonderful procedure. Oh, relax. It's going to feel so good to have a stick, sharp metal products in your mouth and hope to God they're all sterile. And, and I have to be honest, I can't find anything relaxing about smelling your horrible garlic infested um, breath. It just, it just stinks like death. I think somebody killed an animal and left it in your mouth to fester. It's bad enough I had to pull eyeballs out of your mouth. But then I have to smell it on top of that. I, I pass gas, yes, 
That's why I feel better now. Oh, I'd rather smell the aroma of my own farts than the stench coming out of your mouth. Mm. Yes, I hope you forgive me for that. Oh, I understand. Oh, the coccyx? I thought that was the bone in the back of your throat. Oh, that's your butt bone. Why, well, I, I didn't know that. I've been calling your throat bone your butt muscle this whole time? Oh. I thought, oh, well, that makes a lot of sense now. No wonder your teeth and your mouth smell so terrible. I was wondering why I was plucking things from out there. Well, turn around then. Turn around and we'll start all over again. But maybe that's why. Oh, silly me. I thought I was working on that end. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, I, that's farcical. It's farcical that I could make such a stupid beginner's mistake. Yes, just turn around. Oh, there you are. There you are. Oh, you're handsome. You're so handsome. Oh, well, don't worry. You're, yes, you're still pregnant. You still have puppies there. You've been very naughty. <laughs> don't worry. I'll never tell. <laughs> We've all been there before. No, but let me look. Let me just take a quick look inside your mouth. Now that we've got the right end around. Okay, let me look in there. Okay. Oh, uh, yes. No, you're fine. I can tell right away. I can tell right away. Well, that was like I was pulling poo from your anus. Let's just face the facts. It's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> How silly these videos can become. And you have to pay attention or you miss all the jokes. I know, I know, I know, it's just, I just, they come to me. I wasn't even planning on sticking a probe up your butt, but in the end it was just felt so good. It felt good for you too? Oh, that means a lot to me. I'm glad it felt good to you too. Now, we need to take your temperature again, and um, we'll just use the same thermometer, I mean, in one way, in the other. Oh, don't worry. No, it, I don't think, it's clean, yeah. No, I wiped it off. Well, here, I'll wipe it off then. Okay. Well, no, I mean, I have another one, but, the, you know, it's, it's yours. It's, it's, it shouldn't bother you. Let, just let me stick it in there. Please? No, just, I want to put it in your mouth. No? Oh, come on. Open up. Don't be a silly little belly. Silly Billy, open up that mouth. Come on, open up. Open up and let me stick this in your mouth. It doesn't smell at all. Oh, <laughs> Oh, let's go get another one. Wait, just hold on a second. Hold on. Oh, that's foul. That's foul. Oh, I gotta clean that off. That's just terrible. I can't believe it. Oh, you really gotta give up on the sriracha sauce. Too much sriracha with your... Uh, or your Asian food, huh? Man, that makes me sweat. Whew, okay, I feel better. Okay, now here's a brand new clean thermometer. I'll take it out of the plastic. There you go. Now, open up your choppers and let's stick this in there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Get it under the tongue. Oh, yeah. Under the tongue, baby. There you go. No matter how weird I've gotten, I never said who the gender was of the person I'm doing this to. It's quite ambiguous, isn't it? Do you like those little asides? I know I do. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, oh, you're a little feverish. You're a little feverish. Were you a little bit hot from what happened earlier? Yes, I can understand. Well, I've never had it done to myself personally, but I could imagine getting somewhat a little hot under the collar if people were probing me. <laughs> oh, 
an anal dental probe. Who would have thought something like that was even possible? <laughs> oh, I'm so happy it was me and you. You and me, me and you that did this together. Oh, you like that? I could get one of these stuck in my eye. It would be so funny, wouldn't it? And I would leave it in, but I'm not. I'm going to be more careful because these are dangerous. They've already cut my hand twice. How does a dentist keep from cutting his fingers and then the blood gets on there and then he flips the tool over and sticks it in your mouth. How does that work? I, I haven't quite figured that out yet. But if you do, you can let me know, okay? All right. Yes. I, I, it just, it, nothing gave it away. Nothing gave it away that I was in the wrong area. I, you seemed distant, like you weren't talking to me like you should, but uh, I wasn't sure exactly why you seemed so muffled. Yeah, it did clue me in a little bit that you were talking the whole time through the surgery. I, 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 I don't know what that was about either. I thought maybe you were just a, a ventriloquist. Yes. Do you know what a ventriloquist is? Yes, they, they don't move their mouth, but they can still talk. So I thought you would, you know, they would drink the water, you know, and then the dummy talks. I thought you were just talking while this was all going on. I know, it's very odd. It's very odd. Well, now I'm going to have to clean all my tools off. So, I mean, you keep saying that it's my fault, but, you know, you're the one that stank up the whole uh, operating room. I just passed a, a little gas. That was normal. Well, there's no reason to be angry. I did trim away some of the uh, hairs that were bound up around your bottom. And, uh, you know, I pulled some of the... Um, dingleberries out, now that we know that's what I was actually doing, and, um, you know, we, we got those dingleberries out, and uh, I pulled a few foreign objects out of your cavity, so you're free to um, explore any kind of lifestyle changes you want, uh, whatever you want, and uh, I can give you my phone number if you're interested, uh, please don't be afraid to ask. Uh, it's not, no, I mean, if you need a private consultation, I'm saying, if you would like a private consultation, I'd be more than willing to do that for you. I kind of sensed that vibe, but I wasn't going to say anything. But now that the cat is literally out of the bag, I mean the puppy, <laughs> I think you'd actually like to meet my dog. It's a wonderful little cock or spaniel emphasis on the cock <laughs> oh that's so juvenile I really don't have a cock or spaniel I have a cock a poo you know which in your case works you know cock and poo seems to be something you're very interested in so the dog would be perfect for you I just don't yes the puppies are very small if there's any accidents they're just a small little tiny litter and then you crop the tails when they come out Yes. Is that what they call that? You know, where you ding the tails off? Puppy chowder. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know they don't throw those tails away. They make perfect fishing lures. I know. I know. Docking. That's what they call it. I am a doctor. I know all about docking. So you dock the the puppy's tail. Yes. And it just, it, it squirms in your hand. It really does. It it still moves after you've, for, until the sun goes down. Yes, I bet you didn't know that. You you crop the puppy's tail. And we usually do it in the evening, so it's not too macabre. And uh, at sunset, the uh, tails quit wiggling when the moon comes out. That's true. I know that I know none of this sounds real and realistic. Well, I when I was a child, my father uh, found a snake in the woodpile, and it frightened me as a baby. And he cut that snake in half and that snake didn't die until nightfall it's true these are all true stories i don't know what it has to do with um what we're doing right now but i'm sure that everybody got a rise out of it yes so i don't think i went too far do you i don't think so i don't even think anybody's watching anymore i think when i told everybody that you had a litter of pups um in your anal cavity i'm sure that's when they all tuned out right about there maybe
maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. Maybe they were right all along. <laughs> I don't know. But it sure was fun to do. Well, if you're only going to get a little bit of an audience, you might as well let them have some fun, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I do it all for I do it all for you. I really do. I do. I do. Well, now that we've accomplished absolutely nothing but making my stomach completely sick from all this disturbing uh, visual things that I've put in there, I think we should get back to uh, cleaning your teeth. And uh, don't even ask me what I wrap that floss around. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it. Okay. So it was your coxus after all. See, I knew. You told me I didn't know what I was talking about. But I told you that you had that tissue wrapped around your coccyx. See, a doctor knows. And that'll teach you not to listen. You've been very, very naughty. Mm-hmm. So you should listen and let open up that big, big old mouth of yours and let me jam a bunch of dirty, rusty, unsterile objects into your mouth. Okay. I know, it just dawned on me that I didn't have latex gloves on when I was sticking my hand up your butt. I'm sure my fingers smell. <laughs> no, the glove keeps the smell inside. So I can still clean my ear with ease. Yes, thank you for asking, though. That was so considerate. You have to be the best patient I've had all day. Well, actually... You're my only patient today, but we won't go there. No, not when there's medical procedures needing done. Now open wide, and let's get to work. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh.